Hello YouTubers and welcome aboard, I am NoobFlyboyX, and welcome back to F1 2018 Career Mode Season 2. Here we are at the Belgian Grand Prix, our first lap in qualifying about to be completed, and there we go, that is the fastest time of the session at that time, 1.45.477, so that's uh, looking pretty good for now. We're going to go for another lap I think, but we actually don't improve, so that will be the lap that gets us through into Q2 in P6 at that time. Here we go in Q2, looking to complete our first lap uh, on the uh, on the board here. Down the front straightaway, and there we go, that's third at the time. Uh, about uh, eight tenths off of uh, provisional pole signs, and then uh, Vettel who actually pips in later. And later in Q2 we can see we've fallen down to P14 ahead of Kevin Magnussen, seeing if I can improve here, but I want to start the race on a good set of tires. There we go, we're up to eighth. So that's looking pretty good, and that will get us through into Q3. Ahead of Valtteri Bottas, we've lost a few, but um, in uh, Q3, as we can see, I actually decided I'm not going to get a whole lot out of it. And as the session winds down, I was in ninth. The only person behind me was Verstappen, and I wasn't really going to beat him. So we end up in 10th position. So it'll be from 10th for the race. In the 48 races held at Spa between 1950 and 2015, the race winner has only started from pole position on 16 occasions. Qualifying yesterday may have set the order for today, but expect the unexpected here at the Belgian Grand Prix. As the saying goes, of course, anything can happen. You know what? It usually does. Well then, after an exciting qualifying session yesterday, let's take a look at how the cars line up. Sebastian Vettel has a clear track ahead of him today. He starts in pole position, edging out Max Verstappen, who'll start from P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Ricardo, Perez, Lewis Hamilton, and Bottas, Ocon, Raikkonen, Sainz, and Iceman, Leclerc, Holkenberg, Roman Grosjean, and Magnussen, Gasly, Van Dorn, Lance Stroll, and Marcus Ericsson, Hartley, and Fernando Alonso starts from the back of the grid. Now it's almost time to lights out, so let's go down to the track. Okay, remember to break early for turn one, as the pack's gonna bunch up. There's plenty of runoff if things get too close. So it looks like for once there are no penalties to actually promote us or drop us down any further on the grid. It's going to be a two-stop strategy today. You can see I'm upping the fuel so I can run in rich revs for longer. And here we go to the lights. Here we go. Five red lights in Belgium. And away we go. We open up the MFD there, but we actually don't switch it into rich revs just yet. We actually drop it down to lean first. We're just going to save some fuel on the opening lap here, and we get shoved wide onto the grass there by Carlos Sainz, squeezing us out a little bit there, and we've lost the position to Charles Leclerc. We're still in lean revs. I'm not sure why I've actually done that at this point, but that's all right. We're keeping with Leclerc well enough. We've got slipstream as we head on to the Camel Straight. Roman Grosjean close behind us as well. We're sandwiched in between two Ferrari-powered cars here, but Leclerc looks like he's going a little bit slowly as now I flick it up into Rich Revs. He defends the inside and I dive way late on the brakes. I've had a pretty big impact there with Carlos Sainz, actually. I've knocked him way out of line. That was a bit of an error on my part, I'll admit. I went way too late on that. Here's another replay. Yeah, we can see it's both getting really bent out of shape and Sainz getting pretty sideways and also having contact with Leclerc as he um, tried to overtake Sainz. So there we go. Bit of an unfortunate er move early on, but I'm going to try to keep it clean from here. Here on the end of lap one and the beginning of lap two, we are up to the back of Kimi Raikkonen in the Ferrari, who was a ways down. We dive to the inside of him, and there we go. Right up to the back of Esteban Ocon in the Force India. So that's uh, well, good that I am moving up so uh, early on. I'm going to hope to fa pass that Force India pretty soon as well, but Force India tends to run pretty well on this track, so I'm not sure how well that's going to go from here on. You can see by the beginning of, or the middle rather, of lap three, Ocon's already gotten away after a mistake or two from me. So we're just going to have to uh, make up that ground through some good honest racing, I guess. Here we go. We can see uh, Carlos Sainz here coming up my inside, looking to, uh, looking to get back at me for the earlier contact. I go wide onto the grass and wide further onto the uh, onto the runoff area there, and we head down into the bus stop chicane, and I'm actually still stuck behind him. It's going to take a little bit more work to catch the Spaniard here. Here we go, following him on to the front straightaway here. We have DRS now as it's lap three, uh, beginning of lap four by this time. 
So we stay in his slipstream, dive later on the brakes into turn one. And there we go. He's forced to take a wider line as I head through there. So I've made up that place on him as we now head down the uh, second straight and up towards Radion and Eau Rouge. On lap four, we can see some others are starting to make pit stops. Looks like Esteban Alcon is in the pits and we've overtaken him that way rather than catching him on the track so far. Uh, Sergio Perez in the next Force India is up ahead, though it's not long after that that we will actually be in for our own pit stops because the super soft tires do wear pretty quickly on this track. Through the pits, there we go. Of course, the usual Good Williams stop. And out we go. We are out behind Alcon, though. We haven't really made up much ground, and there's Kimi Raikkonen already down in pretty much last place. I can't remember exactly how that happened, but he's down a pretty long way. So we're just going to have to see if we can hold him off, because I know he's going to be now on fresh tires as well, um, and coming up behind me. There's a yellow flag here as we head on down through the middle sector on lap 6, and there's Kevin Magnussen in the Haas, bent way out of shape. I think Raikkonen may have had a little bit of contact with him as he went through there, um, it perhaps clipping the uh, Haas's front wing, though I'm not certain. Um, I think that might, must be the case because Raikkonen dives into the pits moments later at the end of that lap. We make up uh, positions on a few others. There's Sergio Perez in the other Force India out just in front of me, so I think he's lost a little bit of time through the pit stops because he was ahead of Akon, but is now uh, down in 16th while I'm in 17th, so he's left to contend with me for some time. We'll just see if we can pass him early on here. We've got the DRS on him. He's not got DRS on the person in front of him. So there we go. We go flying past him with DRS and the rich revs on that straightaway. We get up to 210 miles an hour, and we can see Akon. We're close enough that his nameplate appears again, so we are making some progress by now on lap 7. The thing is, though, Perez isn't done with me yet. He challenges me a little bit into the bus, bus stop chicane here, but I managed to hold him off. Uh, Alcon has made up ground and passed Marcus Ericsson, so I've got another car in between us, so another one I'm going to have to contend with. But I'm still confident in my straight line speed on the Kemmel straight. Here we go, following uh, Ericsson through uh, La Source, and I think that's La Source anyway. Yeah, that's, that is. I don't think it's uh, the one in Monaco. That's uh, the different one that Jeff is always complaining about. But here we go through Radion and on to uh, Ando Rouge following him in, in the slipstream. I actually have to let off the gas here so I don't catch him at an in, inopportune time where I'd get forced off the track by his uh, AI's uh, programming there. There we go, to the inside as he tries to defend. I break a little earlier this time. I don't want to have any more contact because it's been a little bit of a rough race just with that uh, pretty heavy contact with signs early on. So Ericsson gets to keep the place for now, but now coming down the not quite straight back straight away, it's uh, straight enough that the uh, straight line speed in the Williams is offering me a pretty good advantage here. He's held up actually behind my teammate who defends a little bit and slows himself down and I managed to dive up the inside of both of them into the bus stop chicane around the outside of Stroll who's now trying to accelerate as well and there we go and Stroll is yet to make his pit stop I think he was on a longer first stint starting on the soft tires and potentially uh, doing some other kind of strategy though I'm not certain but once again we're up to the back of Esteban Ocon so there's my goal once again in sight so let's see if I can catch him this time he's got Fernando Alonso in front of him though and pretty darn close so he'll have both slipstream and DRS to make use of so he's going to be a moving target here He's also got the uh, pretty good power of the Mercedes engine. Alonso defends, but Alcon makes the move very early. I'm trying to stay in Alonso's slipstream, but it's not quite worked out like I wanted to, and I don't gain quite enough ground. So Alcon looks like he might have made up, made up that position. They're wheel to wheel for a little while, but he's got the inside now. There he goes. I'm on the inside here of Fernando Alonso. I'm thinking I can make the move here. I stick to the inside, trying to stay with Alcon, and for, uh, Fernando Alonso is f uh, forced to go wide there. So I've made up that position, and I'm up to 12th place. That's looking pretty good. Uh, coming down now onto the back straightaway, lap 9. Alcon's got the other McLaren of Stoffel Van Dorn in his sights, as well as the Toro Rosso of Brendan Hartley, who is a little ways down the order here, or a little ways up the order from where he normally is. Take your pick. Alcon's got DRS, Van Dorn had DRS as well, as Stroll is now in the pits. We're nearly three, three wide on the front straightaway there, but I'm forced to let out, or let up, as uh, Alcon would have probably run into me as we all tried to go for the optimal racing line there. He's also got Van Dorn into the first corner and out of it. I'm going to try to make the move on Van Dorn here around the outside and Oruj and Radion. I've gone way the heck inside there. But um, it was probably a little bit of a loss of control. I don't think the stewards are going to be too upset, especially because Van Dorn actually let in sort of past here a little bit, but uh, not permanently, because there we go, later on the brakes. Actually, he's still there fighting with me. He goes to the inside, 
into that corner there. And there we go. He's actually still ahead of me, so I'm going to have to wait to make that move. So it's probably actually optimal that he passed me again, because otherwise I might have gotten a penalty for that corner cut. But this time I'm close enough, easily on the back straightaway, to make the move on him. Akon has made up the position on Hartley, who now pits, and is a ways up the road. He's being remarkably difficult to catch, is uh, Esteban Akon this, this race. There's several others in the pits now, and we're promoted up the way to 7th, but we're getting close to our second pit stop here. So we're going to have to lose some of those positions here in not too long. Coming down the back straightaway once again on lap 13, I've finally managed to catch up to the back of them a little bit. There goes Akon into the pits, so I've made up the position now. I'm hoping I'll be able to use the slipstream from the two Mercedes cars ahead of me, at least a little bit, and uh, have a pretty good lap time, hopefully manage the overcut on Esteban Akon, see if I can pass him in the pits. Unfortunately, though, I don't think that's going to quite work, as I can see him on the minimap as I make my pit stop on the end of lap 14, beginning of lap 15. Alcon's now coming around the first corner, and there he goes right in front of me, and also managing to get past me is Roman Grosjean. You get the message also that Lance Stroll is out of the race, so once again I'm left to fly the flag solo for Williams. Here we go. I'm just going to have to see if I can uh, get Slipstream off of Grosjean, even from a little ways back here. I don't think I'm going to get too much. Here we go. Full power to the engine, DRS, but not really much Slipstream. I'm gaining a little bit, but I suspect that's because Grosjean may be in fuel-saving mode. But here we go, once again, on to the back straightaway, looking for the slipstream here. Dive to the inside, and there we go, hard on the brakes, up the inside into the bus stop chicane. And we're free once again to try to get after Esteban Ocon, but again, he's being remarkably slippery. He sets fastest lap there, so that's the indication of that Force India's pace around here, which I can't quite seem to match. I'm getting close. Alcon will next pass Nico Hulkenberg and will allow me to catch up to him. I'll get Slipstream and DRS to counter the uh, fastest lap Alcon set and allow myself to set one instead. And now we're on the tail of Nico Hulkenberg, so we'll be able to get Slipstream off of him. I'm starting to run out of race, though. It's lap 17 of 22. The race here in Spa goes by pretty quickly, usually, because of the long lap time and the lower number of laps that we have to complete. But here we go. On to the Kemmel Straight. I've been saying here we go a lot, haven't I? But we get DRS hard on the accelerator there. Not using rich revs because I want to save some fuel, though at this point I'm not sure what I need the extra fuel for. I'm more than, or almost got half a lap uh, extra. But I've got Nico Hulkenberg. He's not done with me yet, though. He's going to come back at me where I've been liking to make some overtakes recently. He's going to come up the inside into the final set of corners here. Fortunately, I managed not to run wide, but this time I'm going to have to be a little bit more aggressive, I think. Nope, there we go. We've managed not to dip a tire into the grass like we did on an earlier pass here. So there we go, we leave him a little bit of room, but squeeze him out a little bit. We get some DRS, because we were uh, just behind him as we went into the detection zone. But unfortunately, Akon is not going to be caught. He is refusing to accept defeat here. Max Verstappen will win the race for Red Bull. Excellent win for him. I think that's his first of the season. Um, a very good result for Red Bull there. But uh, it looks like Alcon has actually passed even his teammate Sergio Perez and the other Force India. So we've been left in the dust here as we come towards the final uh, corners of the race. We've left Hulkenberg behind for good measure, though. So still going to be, I think, a decent points finish for us. Ninth place and two points. That's something. It's not quite what we wanted, but it's an improvement from last year. That's a pretty difficult track, too. Top job, my friend. Top job. I was a bit worried about this one at the start of the weekend, but you pulled through. Thank you. And as the adrenaline dies down after another eventful Grand Prix, here come the top three, out onto the podium. So as I mentioned, Max Verstappen will win. Sebastian Vettel will share the podium with him, as will Daniel Ricciardo in third. So that's a pretty good result for Red Bull today. It will take a little bit of a bite out of the small lead that Ricardo has gotten in recent races, but it is still enough to keep him ahead of Sebastian Vettel, who is the uh, nearest championship contender. Max Verstappen, I believe, in third place. Uh, if not now, then he will be very soon in a couple races. Spoiler warning, by the way. <laughs> so that's second place, or not second place, two points, rather. And tenth place, no. Ninth place for us. We started from 10th, so officially a gain of one position. Ugh, I can't speak today, but that's all right. Because we've got some upgrades to the car coming, and next race, though we didn't do so well last year, is a track we should be pretty good on. It'll be the Italian Grand Prix, and so we should be able to make use of our straight line speed. As I mentioned last time, I'm hoping to get Lance Stroll into the points at least once this season. So hopefully uh, the next race will be a good opportunity to do that. 
Anyway, YouTubers, thank you very much, as always, for watching this episode, and have a nice day.